Hey y'all, this is Mike with Raider Dog Ranch. Today we're going to be building a bird feeder from basic plumbing parts that you can get from your hardware store. Come on, let's get started. So these are all the parts that I need to build this bird feeder. We'll start with a four inch PVC pipe. That's the main piece that came in a little two foot section that I got from Home Depot. Slice that in half and we're probably going to make two of them. This is the cap to go on the top. This is what they call a test cap that will go on the bottom. A drill, because we're gonna drill small holes. We're gonna make two, four, six, eight holes in this. See how I staggered the holes. And these little pieces are gonna get split in half and they're gonna go into each one of these holes. It'll be a little cap, kind of a rain cover for the food, but also to stick inside of this and keep the food from pouring out when I fill it. Hopefully that's gonna work. I've got a one and a quarter inch hole saw, and these are one inch PVC pipe, but remember one inch PVC pipe is the inside diameter, not the outside diameter. So if I show you this, this pipe is actually a little bit bigger than the hole, but that's okay because we're gonna split these in half and we should be able to flex them a little bit. This is schedule 40, so it's a little bigger. Hopefully we'll be able to bend it. Um, rope to hang it from the tree and a little bit of paint to cover up the PVC because PVC does not like to be out in the sun. It will start to dry rot and crack over time. So we'll just take a little bit of paint. We good to go. All right, we're gonna try getting a little something started here. I wonder if we can split this like a log. Okay, we're gonna see if this works. Never tried this before, but it seems easier than cutting it all the way down. Mm, looks okay so far. Fifty-fifty. We're gonna call that good. Well, maybe not so much fifty-fifty on that side. Good enough. Okay. Well, maybe that's not the best idea. This is the next one I did off camera. It started to get to that point and it cracked. So don't do that. Use something else. Since splitting the pipe didn't work, I have to saw through each one. Notice that I'm going across the vise. If I put the pipe in the vise like I'm showing now, it would squish the cut and it would bind up the saw. So you got to go crossways and keep moving it up. encourage you to go slow as you push that in just in case it tries to grab your hand and always the trouble of getting stuff out of the hole saw to do now is get some 
180 grit sandpaper and go through here and make sure it's nice and smooth. Make sure there's no burrs. You know, because the birds. Okay, done. Okay, we got our holes. We got our hoods. Yeah, that fits nicely. So we're gonna try to set them in there like this. So we have half of it. Like I mentioned, when we put food in here, it'll tend to wanna fall out of these holes. Hopefully this will push it back a little away from the holes so that I can fill it all the way up. So we'll add all of those. This uh, schedule 40 is a little thicker. So it's a little hard to work with, but it's not too bad. I don't know who cut this one. This is really crooked. Probably my kids. Should I go way in like that? It's an experiment. We'll see. Oh, uh, there we go. Maybe you should clean that one? No. So here is the almost finished project. I'm thinking right now that it's gonna sit like this and we'll put little perches in here. And I think we're gonna use zip ties. I saw some other videos where they use zip ties because the birds are really light and they can land on them and stay, but they're too flimsy for squirrels to sit there and eat constantly. So test tubes are already on the bottom. Or the that off so you can see inside so you can see they go almost all the way to the middle i can adjust those in or out if i need to but i'm hoping that those are going to keep the feed from pouring out okay i realize maybe i didn't do a good job setting out the tools in the beginning so <laughs> as i think through the project a little more we need i added the zip ties we need those but to get the zip ties in there we need some drill bits so i forgot to add the drill bits and then some wire cutters to cut off the excess. Um, this is intended to be for songbirds. So you figure the height of a, um, you know, like say a cardinal or a blue jay or a mocking jay. Those are all part of the songbird bird group. So I kind of don't know where to put these perches. Um, I'm gonna guess somewhere around here. This one's gonna get really close to the bottom, I guess. And I don't know that this matters too much. I'm not going to be very scientific about this. But what we're going to do is drill holes in here. I mentioned before that we are going to use the zip ties because according to another video I watched, the squirrels have a harder time getting into these if they don't have something to perch on or to hang on to. So um, this is a work in progress. So a couple of things that I'm not gonna know until we demo it is, first of all, do these need to be glued in place? Are they firm enough? I think for birds they are, but again, if a squirrel jumps up here and grabs it, these might fall out or they might pull out. We do have some squirrels in the yard. You probably know if you've ever tried to do bird feeders the biggest challenge is definitely the squirrels. Either you accept that they're going to eat it and just let them have at it, or you try to put up squirrel baffles and things like that. And I've heard none of them work very well. If you want to see a good video, Mark Rober has a really good video on trying to defeat the squirrels. Mark Rober's a very smart guy, and he's come up with some great ingenious different ways to try to um, deceive the squirrels or block them. And it just shows how incredibly smart squirrels are and how good they are at avoiding the traps you set up. I'm going to use a 332nd bit and I'm going to try to put two holes 
right beside each other since these are long and flat. So I got the two beside each other, but they're not connected. Try to... There we go. That's what I was trying. And then I think I'm probably going to need to glue these in place with uh, hot glue or CA glue. What's that? Of course I have safety glasses on. Safety first, always. We're gonna go to the one hole Waller method. If you haven't used that method before, it's really easy to do on plastic. Just stick it in there, wobble the bet back and forth, and then kind of run it in pushing on each side. You can create a oval instead of a circle. Okay, that one worked. So we're going to pull it through. We're going to get it to lock. Okay. So I did it like this instead of like that, thinking, you know, this is a little stronger than this. I don't know. What do you think? Maybe some should be going to it like this and some are like that. Again, this is a project. There's not many that I've seen built like this, so I imagine there will be a part two to this video showing what we've learned. See how that just falls back in? So we'll have to get some glue to hold that in place. So what we want to do measure each one of these they are about an eighth of an inch so these holes are going to be an eighth of an wait what am i talking about we're not measuring this we're just drilling holes and trying to see if we can get it fit what we want to do though is make it fit snug so these i did a good job these don't move very much but this one where's it at it'll reveal itself this one so we're going to definitely have to put a little bit of glue on these two to hold them in place but we are not measuring these for sure. I'm just gonna use a little bit of super glue. Proper name is CA glue. Some kind of chemical name that I don't remember, but we'll use that. By the way, the gel super glue is way better at not clogging up after first use. So try to get yourself some of the gel. I did decide we're going to go with the rope. It's just honestly, the the braided steel would be a better solution long term, but I don't have all the parts here, and it's probably not worth going to the store. This rope I expect will last at least a season, and then we could replace it. But we'll see. So I've I've created about a wingspan of rope here, and we will cut that. Always be very careful when you're cutting rope. Cut away from you. Always close your knife right after you're done. So see how that frays out? You want to try to keep that from happening. You do that by burning the ends of wire. I'm sorry, of rope, not wire. It's a little windy out here today. So melting those, these are all plastic fibers, so melting those will help it not unfray. And we're also going to tie a knot in the bottom. Um, I found this laying around 
Uh, I'm thinking this test tube or this test cap is not going to be strong enough. I could be wrong. Maybe I'm over engineering it. But the weight of the food on a little point right here, I'd like to have a washer. It's about this big. I don't have a washer here, but I did find this in the garage. So I'm going to use this as extra support to sit underneath it like this. And so we need to go through this cap. We'll drill a hole in that. Then we'll go all the way through, drill a hole in this, and tie the knot at the bottom. It's a thick cap. Okay, probably not in the center, but good enough. Do the same thing with this. Try not to drill through the table. Again, not perfectly centered. But for what we're using it for, that's fine. If you really wanted to, you could draw lines across the middle that would give you the center. But for our purpose, it's not too important. Hopefully it won't hang too far to the side. That's the only concern I have. That with the weight on it, it may tilt it. Again, probably not a big deal. So we got the holes made. We will now feed our rope through. Okay, that fits through nicely. And then we'll go through We'll go through this guy and then go through this guy. And I'm just going to do a square knot on the bottom of that. Okay, so there we go. We'll put some PVC glue around here, glue the test cap and on to the next one. If you have not used PVC glue before, there's nothing to it. There's a purple primer. They usually come in a two pack. This is the one that I got. The handy pack, because you will need both. And this is the cement. So the primer helps to prepare the surface, clean the surface. You can see the brush is built in here. Just run that around the inside. We'll run it around the top in this case, because this one does connect to the top. that a second to dry. We'll go over it with uh, the glue and try not to get the glue on the rope. That will be the tricky part I think. I think we'll mostly go around the edge here. Okay. Put him down. Closed. And we'll give that a few minutes to set up and we should be ready to go. Okay, I've given this about 10 or 15 minutes to dry. It, I pulled on this tab, it's, it's steady enough. I think it'll cure more over time, but it is what I need it to be. So that is how that'll sit. I can still feel some of the CA glue that hasn't cured perfectly. Yes, so that will go there. This will come down to here. So just a reminder, this cap is not gonna get glued on the top because that will be the refill. Um, it'll go on like this. It's a little snug, so it's kind of hard to show on camera, but so it'll hang like this. All the weight is being held here. And if I need to refill it, I'll pop this top off. I'll leave this slack here. I may do a washer, an O-ring or something to try to make this hole a little smaller. It's bigger than I wanted. It's a little gap for water to get in there. I'm in central Texas. It doesn't rain very much here, so not a huge deal. 
So I think the next thing is to put some bird seed in it and start watching it. We are going to go with some camo. What is this camo green? Mm, sort of green gray. All right. So I guess I could have sprayed this before I put the little feet tabs on there. Yeah, this is going to make me walk into the the path of the wind. So there we have it, a homemade DIY PVC birdhouse that really should hold a fair amount of food. We want to use this out of some property we have and in part it's in compliance with our wildlife exemption so we need to make sure we have feeders, large feeders in multiple locations and I'll tell you some of the ones that you can buy are very very expensive so uh, if you have a wildlife exempt area that is under a songbird exemption this is an idea that you might want to use. I think all in all, it's probably $15 in parts. I think I bought the parts before COVID, so I'll get a current price list on everything. And I'll follow up with a part two video on if anything changes, how the birds use it, and if the squirrels give us any problems and we have to adapt for that. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up like. And if you enjoy this kind of content, please click the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you'll be alerted for new videos being popped up. Thanks again. Have a good day.